Hello. Welcome to Fresh Two Beards Podcast. I'm Nick. This I've is squirted Levi. in my eye. Oh, that's what she said. Something. <laughs> wow. Ooh, uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I guess it depends on your preference. You ever wanted to be a pirate? <laughs> <laughs> Can't say that I have. Um. Yeah, that's that's it. That was an intro. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in hot. What are we drinking today? Uh, we're chasing some freshies. Mm. Fresh up IPA from Desk Shoots. Mm-hmm. Um, featuring some El Dorado and Zappa hops. Got a nice color too. It looks nice. Some so... Floaties going on in there. Quite a bit of floaties. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. What a please. What color would you call that? Piss. Okay. No questions asked. Well, I was thinking, you Other know, than that one. I was, I was really thinking. I was like, if that was a soda. Mm. What flavor soda would it be? Mm. My mind went to like lemon lime, but then you think lemon lime soda and you're like, that shit's clear. And yeah. that's weird, right? It is weird. It shouldn't be clear. Shouldn't be. Something's, that's got to be poison for your body, right? Well, the fact that it's, it's clear. soda, but yeah. True. Yeah. So that's really the point I was getting at was, I don't know why lemon lime is clear. Yeah. No, it definitely shouldn't be. Um, it should look like this, but maybe it smells pretty good. It smells. <sighs> I don't know what I'm getting. It smells pretty good though. <sighs> Very hoppy smelling taste wise. Better than I expected from Deschutes. Wow. Are you a Deschutes hater? Well, yeah, cause they make Fresh squeezed, so that makes sense. Oh, I just don't understand. Don't understand you people. So don't do fucking do it. What don't you understand? Do you? Really, I mean, we've had this conversation. Too uh, many yeah, times. I know. I we've had this conversation, but tell you, the audience who may they not. They make have. a beer called the Fresh Squeezed IPA. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, if Levi gives a shit, which it's about fifty-fifty chance <laughs> that he will or won't, he'll put the can right here. I'm giving it 50-50. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Maybe you will. Maybe you get bored one day, right? Uh, but probably not. But it's a hop being squeezed, and the juices are exploding out of it, okay? And it, like, it really paints you a picture, well, literally. They're dripping. Okay. They've changed it. The fresh haze, they're exploding. All right. They've, yeah. But either way, you're you're ringing, you're ringing yeah, out a hop sure. to get the juices out of it. You know, the little squeezy, they're literally putting it on a juicer. So. I guarantee you it doesn't taste like that. I bet you it tastes like watery as fuck. Um, I'm running through their lineup because I'm trying to figure out how many beers I actually like from them. Mm. They have a lot of, well, at least they call them fresh. I don't know. If they probably are, but uh, like probably no. down in Bend that you have to get them. Like the fresh squeeze old fashioned. I want to know what that is. I would try that. Fresh Funk Wild IPA. Sounds like you'd hate it. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a stupid fucking idea. Their Neon Daydream, I think. Did we have that on the podcast? I feel like I remember liking that one or thinking it was pretty did, good. Isn't that the one that we did the Light Bright to? No. No? The Light Bright was Seven Seas. Oh. Uh, their Wowza is like a low-calorie IPA. That one's pretty good. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a few that I like. Their Royal Fresh Imperial, I remember liking that. Have you had Georgetown's Meowza? Uh, that's their Imperial IPA, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I got it or not. It's pretty good. Is I it? Like, yeah, I actually liked it. I think I didn't because I was skeptical of if it was going to be like, uh, more like on the Manning side, and I didn't want oh, like a... no. I don't want a balls deep. Yeah. I mean, now is the season, actually, so... Ooh. But I think it came out in the summer, and I was like... Mm-hmm. Eh. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. Um, so their Fresh Squeeze Old Fashioned is 
Citrusy, fresh squeeze, this hot forward ale gets an old-fashioned twist with sweet orange peel and bourbon barrel aging. Mm, okay. So. I would fuck with it. I'd give it a go. Uh, does, that say, does that say seasonal or year-round? What did that say? It said year-round. What the fuck? So it might not be fresh hopped. Oh, I can guarantee you it's not. Just like all of their fresh squeeze I stuff don't isn't. Know. All their fr- no, None of their fresh squeeze stuff is fresh hopped. At least not normally. Maybe they do versions I just, of it. I just don't know, you know. They piss me off. Anyways, all that to say, their can looks delicious. The beer fucking sucks. Fresh squeezed, yeah. Yeah, sure. Eh, it doesn't suck, but it's like... It's after, not great. After, yeah, it's not great. No, and what it is, you don't, you don't dislike the beer. You dislike the fact that it's marketed... The expectation that they in set. In a way, yeah. yeah. Sure. And so, but it is not great. Objectively, no. it's not a great it's IPA. Not, yeah, we're not drinking it all the time, but pretty much never. It's know. not bad. Not bad. No. This one, I am gonna fall in that same category. I think. I. I'm trying to find anything <laughs> special about this beer. That no, hundred percent. Like it's fine. Yeah, it's good. It's better than the fresh squeezed. It's good. It's just, I'm bored. I think the fresh squeezed is a bad root parrot, a bad Manny's. It's just like Northwest style bad. It's not, it's not bad, but again, yeah, it's you're, just you're not, still hating on it. I just, just, I you know, I don't love it. It's just again, it's like this. It's just nothing special. It's just like, yeah, sure, yeah. If there's absolutely nothing else, I would drink it. Six percent. 50 IBUs. I mean, it's pretty light. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty light. Looks pretty light. Easy drinking. Yeah. There's a little bit of a funky flavor in there. I don't know if that's the... It's kind of grassy. Yeah. I don't know if that's due to the unfiltered aspect of it or or what. Is it unfiltered? Yeah. As I was saying, you definitely got some particles in here. When you give it a... And then you can give it a look. You yeah, see, you see all them. Look at this. I they do. spun it. I do. See all them boys. We all right. Uh, so Cold War comes out. Came out. It comes out. Depends on where you're at. <laughs> in four hours for us. For us. Though we can play it. A little trick called New Zealand. Can we agree that that's stupid? Yes. Like. It should just come out the exact same time across See, the earth. What happens is like then people complain, why? which you know, fuck them. Well, because they're stupid. People complain, and that's why I say fuck them. Yeah, because they're like, oh, it releases at six p.m. on Pacific time. That's one a.m. in the UK, and so like they get to play it before we do. It's like, no, they don't. Chill, S- stay up and play it. That's what I did when I was in high school. Yeah, no, exactly. Or go to work like you're a fucking adult. Stop complaining and just yeah. play it when you get off. Yeah. I don't... Yeah, so... Welcome to life. Like, yeah. things release at a time. It's like it's like a TV show. It's like, oh, it's not fair. This show is airing at 8 p.m. our time, but they get it earlier. It's like, It's like... Well, it's also like complaining like someone went to see The Avengers at the midnight premiere... And you didn't because you had to work the next day. Oh, it's a hundred percent that. And it's like, yeah. What do you get? Like, what's the point of complaining? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it, who who are you mad at here? Because I don't. You sh- you should be mad at yourself, really. And I I I would prefer it just gets like, they just say like, you know, midnight Pacific time. It releases everywhere. Everywhere. Yep. When we push the button. Yeah. Exactly. Done. Yeah. Stop. So uh, catering to every little bitch, okay? Yeah. Because now it's just confusing. You can't make everyone happy, and you can't cater to everyone. Yeah. But I really, don't, I at the same time, I don't really care that New Zealand gets to play it first. No, it's I don't just, care that New Zealand gets to play it, it first. It just, I just think it's dumb that they are. It's just weird. It. Yeah. Just push the button. Right. Go. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. But um. You you played the demo, right? No. Okay. Just... I have not played a second of Cold War. Okay. Me neither. Salvador I... has. And I'm just interested in playing zombies. Fair enough. I saw some of the multiplayer gameplay. Looks fine. Mm-hmm. 
the, I I realized when I was watching that gameplay that I just like Infinity War style games. I used to like the uh, like I think I like Black Ops one and two. Yeah, but especially like Black Ops three and Black Ops four. Now Modern Warfare is like released and it's uh, like kind of calling back to that COD four Modern War Modern Warfare two days. Mm-hmm. I love like the sound of the guns, the look of them. Like it just looks very, looks and sounds very like real. Yeah. And Cold War and the previous Black Ops games, it sounds very arcadey. Yeah. Um, which I like, Call of Duty is an arcade style shooter, so I get it. Uh, I just it like I remember on Modern Warfare's launch day playing through some of the campaign and just being like stunned at the sound design, like bombs going off, like all the gunfires like fucking loud as shit. Yeah. There's some like bad things about that, like footsteps are like really weird in this game where like your your footsteps are like right in your ears and you yeah. won't hear an enemy coming up behind you until they're like killing you. Yeah. That part doesn't make sense. So there's stuff like that where it's like it's not beneficial to the gameplay, but the sound in general just sounds nice. It sounds like I'm in the action. Yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. And it's like, I just think, yeah, going back to, you know, COD 4 days, COD 2, you know, like, I didn't, didn't even have a fucking headset, you know, in COD 2 days. Mm-hmm. Um, and then even, you know, uh, Modern Warfare 2, like, you know, now we got Xbox Live, we got headsets we're playing with. Like, even then the comparing the quality then to now it's it's just immaculate it's come so far and the certain like minute details that like sure like the footsteps are annoying but then there's other things that like make up for it yeah right so so just like watching the gameplay of cold war and stuff like the guns i think they just look dumb um i think the sound's dumb i like there's just a lot of it that i'm like it just doesn't excite me I'm yeah. sure the game, like a lot of the aspects of the gameplay, are better than Modern Warfare, especially like multiplayer. But Maybe. I don't really like multiplayer anymore. Yeah, I'd rather play Warzone. Right. Um. So it just is what it is for me. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I, I I like to fuck around with multiplayer every now and then, um, especially when the game's new. I think it's a lot more fun after the game's been out for a while. It just the multiplayer becomes less and less fun. Because yeah. you you find the guns that you really like. You don't really stray outside of that because... And it's not even that you don't want to use different guns. It's that they just kind of suck yeah. compared to what you are using. There's just a meta and then that's all you use. Exactly, right. And and then when, when you're talking about multiplayer, it's, it's like also the guns you use don't really matter. It's just whatever you're comfortable with too. Yeah. Like they all kind of have the same amount of hit when it, when it comes to multiplayer. Now that Warzone's a thing, it's like the the gun you use matters a whole fuck ton a lot. Oh yeah, and not only that, the attachments on the gun matter yeah. a whole fuck ton a lot. Where you know prior to Battle Royale in COD, again it was really just preference, right? Like you can just throw whatever you want on the gun, and it's just you know whatever you're most comfortable with. Yeah, I mean there were certain guns that were always like sure better, sure, but not to the breakdown of Warzone where it's like everyone's using these four guns yeah no it, it was usually like the matter of like you know one like i think of like the scar in modern warfare 2 it's like if you're able to if you're shooting at the same time you're going to kill first because like your bullets pack a little bit more punch so you'll ha- like kill them a bullet sooner than they would you but again it's like it's not that big of a deal because if they see you first compared to you if you see them first they're still going to kill you anyways yeah so yeah, it definitely didn't matter as much as it does now in Warzone. Well, and I think skills-based matchmaking plays a big part in that too, Yeah, where it's like they've tightened it down so much where you're getting people that are at your skill level. All Like all the people in your lobby are at your skill level, so it just is sweatier. Absolutely, right. So it's just, I don't know. It's It's a weird, it, gaming's in a weird stage right now i think i talked about um and i think it relates to this but i was talking about this with jack where i i think it's ridiculous in situations where we like compress and dumb everyone down to a certain level rather than just bringing everybody up 
So like in this instance, like why why make the matchmaking like so skill based where like we're all at the exact same level rather than just like some people are better than you, some people are worse than you. Like you'll just random. Yeah, it's random. Like you'll feel good about killing the people worse than you, and then the people that are better than you will force you to become better. Yep. So that's how I well, and my thing too is like if you're so strict on skills based matchmaking, it's going to hurt you inherently on the connection side. So I'd rather it just be random, priority mm-hmm. on connection only. Mm-hmm. That way it is what exactly what you are talking about. Because if I go into a match with 150 ping, competing against a guy who's at my same skill level, but the the server host is closer to him, so he's at 30 ping. It's a huge advantage. Huge. And then not only that, like we're squad up, squatted up, and so I'm pulling the average closer to me. Yeah. Than you guys. So. So now I'm sitting now, here with like now you're also at 150 lobbies. ping. Yeah. Competing against a higher skill, generally a higher skilled team. Yeah. It's just like, just like especially for like you and PJ, like now the cards are really stacking up. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, fuck, man. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Instead of it just being random and it's like, okay, that team ca- that we came across, was ju- they, ju- they were just better. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and that, and that'll that happen too, right? That like, does happen, sure. And, and, and I don't think like we're those fucking dudes who sit there like, oh, that's fucking bogo. Oh, that's so fucking stupid. I had him. I feel like we, we call it how it is. I mean, all of us are kind of just like, yep. Yeah, he got me. I like. There's so many times in the gulag where I like turn the corner, I just get like shmanged. I'm like, "Yep, is what it is." Got outplayed there. Yeah, sure. So yeah, we're, I'm not saying that like we never get outplayed. We just lose because connection and but, all that. No, stuff. No, no, no. But, but like, but, but yeah, but that does, does happen, happen qu- quite often. a bit, though. Yeah, I mean, we can't go a single. We can't go a half hour without it happening. Well, and like when we're squatted up together, like I was saying, like how it, it's like pulled towards me being the higher skill love player in our group yeah. like it just sucks for you guys i feel like sure yeah i mean i i guess but i i mean i get like where you're coming from too where it's like it teaches you to be better and all that stuff i just yeah. mean like it it sucks not having like the random encounters where like you could encounter a team that's worse than you and right. then you could encounter a team that's better than you yeah just randomly totally instead it's just like a constant sweaty ass barrage of okay these are like average it all out almost every team we run into is better yep yep it's just it's like nuts yeah it's it's not common where we like roll up on a guy and they're just like oh i can't fucking shoot you and i'm just like bam bam like that's not common at all yeah uh, usually it's like shit. I need to be. I need to have good position. I need to have cover. I need to land my fucking shots. Ideally, I need to land headshots. And it's like all of that. Like you've got to be like making these split second decisions too. And that's the hardest part. I feel like for me is it's not that I necessarily don't have. I don't know. It's a combination of me and a combination of getting older. Yeah, it's that's, like, that's a big thing too. <laughs> like me in general, I've never been amazing at video games. I've age, always been like age fine. based matchmaking. That, now, now we're talking. Now we're talking. <laughs> my Don't reaction put us against time, those cracked out 12 year olds. Dude, yeah. My reaction time yeah. was never amazing and it's only getting worse now. Definitely. And so it's like, yeah, you're having to make these split second decisions and, and like I'll die. And you guys will be like, yo, what? What the fuck? Like, what are you doing? What happened? And, I'm, and it's like, like sometimes it's like I have an excuse. Sometimes it's like oh I just got outplayed. And other times it's just like I I don't know. I, I don't made know. a bad decision or I didn't make the decision. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, dude. I uh my brain just didn't do the thing. Yeah, uh, I have no excuse for you. <laughs> it just happens. So I've accepted it. Um, it is what it is. Uh, we have fun playing the game. There's definitely some times where it pisses us the fuck off, but yeah. I mean, we wouldn't continue to play it like we do if if we didn't have fun overall. True. So it's a good time, but there's definitely necessary changes that I really wish they would make. Yeah, I like the most recent time that I remember was like us three going against a squad in like that lower, like cul-de-sac complex where like both you and PJ died, and I had to clutch up solo against yes. the full squad. And yes. I was just like, 
See, this is why skills-based matchmaking is not great. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, admittedly, I made a relatively poor choice. Um, I just, I thought I was going to be fine. So from my perspective... Well, that's the, that's the thing, though, like, right, is that if it was just... If if it was all even across the board, then your opponents would be making the same poor choices. Right, exactly. Yeah. But it's not even across the board. No, it's not. So it's right. Just- no, these guys, like, the second I started doing what I was doing, his teammate knew exactly what to do. So I was on the side of a house shooting at those guys on top of the hill. I downed the guy lower on the hill. Didn't even see the guy. And logically, looking back, it's like, of course there were teammates. I just didn't even look for him. I saw that guy and I was like, bang, yeah. downed him. Guy on top of the hill started shooting at me. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I have to run down the entire side of the house with no cover and hopefully I can make it around the corner, which I didn't. Yeah. So, yeah, it was one of those moments where it was just like, you make that split second decision and you're like, well, got to commit now and at least down the one guy, but I'm fucked. So. <sighs> Such is life. Such is life playing video games yeah Uh, although we didn't do great overall i think we probably had like i would say we had one good game i think we had one good game um we had a couple fine games yeah but then the rest were not great great um overall was still pretty fun and maybe that's just because i hadn't played in a while that i was like oh it feels good to play again but for sure yeah it probably i mean it'd probably been like two weeks at least Something like that. I need to like really work on that battle pass to make sure I can get the battle pass again because I'm yeah. not fucking paying for it. <laughs> no, I'm. We sh- we should play this weekend. Yes. You should consider waking up like early, on like yes Saturday or something. Yeah, because we're doing something on Saturday night, right? Yeah. Okay. I just mean because like I usually get up. Mm. You don't have to get up as early as I do. Like, God three. no. Wouldn't even dream of it. But even if it was seven, fuck you. Yeah, seven. You get some coffee, play some Call of Duty with your coffee. Nope. It's more like it's great. wake up, slide to the edge of the bed naked, and turn on Xbox. That's what you're getting at 7 a.m. for me. Oh, dude, get, getting some coffee, it's just like loading up some cod. Oh, it feels so good. I hate fish, but I can smell this, and I know it's fish. And it does. It smells like fried fish, and it smells pretty probably good. probably is. Yeah. It's probably tilapia. Yeah, that would make, yep. It smells exactly like tilapia. I wish. But uh, but no, not for me. Um, but yeah, no, hundred percent. Saturday should be Call of Duty. Yes, and I'm down. Morning, morning games are just fun to me. Yeah, I I agree. I like it. the The lobbies feel way different for one. Even on the weekend, still feels way different, and. It's just like nice to just be like chill, not have any responsibilities, not worry about like, oh, I've got to work tomorrow. Yeah. You know, you got the whole day. Because like right now we play at like 8 p.m. Yeah. Working the next day. And it's like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And and usually when I get off too, I'll watch like an episode or two or something before I go to bed as well. Yeah, exactly. Same. Because you got to like chill out. Yep. Yeah, I'm not trying. I'm like full going for full sweat to just, okay, good night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. No, I'm usually like, okay, you know, get a little drink going, turn on my iPad, watch some Netflix, you know. Yeah. Are you, uh, are you back to nightcaps? Uh, occasionally. Okay. Cause I feel like for a while there, you, you were severely limiting yourself. Yeah, so I didn't know if uh, you were still on that train or if you were just back to your regular schedule, or, uh, or I should say, just whatever you want to do. Yeah, I'm kind of just doing whatever. Okay. I shouldn't say a regular schedule. You're yeah. not. You're not <laughs> regularly not like- an alcoholic. I gotta <laughs> have a drink every night before I go to bed. Uh, like, no, it's just if you're feeling it, you feel it. But otherwise, it is. I, I do uh, feel it fairly often, like on those late nights. Like eleven PM, eleven thirty, when I'm just like sweating, mm. you know, clutching up on some games, and then I'm like, "Fuck, I gotta go to bed." Yeah, and then I'm like, "Okay," put myself like through like the ritual, you know, <laughs> right? Making my drink, 
couple episodes of something or YouTube or whatever and yeah. just like chilling out in bed. Yep. I feel that. That's the great thing, greatest thing about uh, having an iPad, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Just like put it in its little holder and just get my AirPods going. Yep. Easy. I was going to say, get the headphones and done. Don't even got to disturb your partner and yeah. solid. I do need to, so I feel like this is just going to be a never ending quest for quality sleep, but uh, I've got the bed now, you know, mm-hmm. I, I got a purple bed. How is it by the way? I fucking love it. Okay. And I don't, cause you've had it for a couple weeks now, right? Or yes. a week or what? A uh, couple, a couple weeks, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think that I was swindled into their marketing ploy. But a little bit. But maybe a little bit. So here's the thing, though. Was it worth what you paid for it versus what would it be, have been worth paying full price? See, here's the thing. I um, I, I don't give a fuck. So I this mattress is uh, the queen size. That's their middle tier, if you will. Um the queen size is like mm-hmm. 1700 bucks. Yeah, it's expensive. Insane, right? I mean, yeah. it's expensive. Even for a mattress, that's pretty expensive. Yeah. Um, I paid this kind old gentleman $250 on the spot, and he's like, here you go. I've had it for a year, and honestly, the thing looked brand fucking new. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's some old dude, you know, Yeah. whatever. Um, What I paid for it, Fuck fucking yeah, was that worth it? Okay. That was one of the best purchases that I've ever made in my entire life. Yep. Can confirm. Um, Is it worth $1,700? I don't think so. There you go. I've slept on... I have not slept on. I have laid on my brother's bed. Uh, He got a nectar. And I think those are... I mean, those are under Mm 1000 You know, this one's already like past the halfway point to 2000 yep so for his being under a thousand it's like i think they're can't really tell the difference can't really tell the difference well they're same quality i'll say that yeah same exact quality it's That's really I mean. just preference at that point yeah like how firm it is and all that exactly shit, yeah you know? but as far as like quality wise yeah can't tell the difference like they're both solid mattresses so it's like that's what i would urge people to do is like Really weigh your options of like w- the qualities that you're looking for. It's not that one it, mattress is better than another. It's why mattress stores like are, th- or at least were a thing. Yeah. It's because like go lay on them, understand what your preference. Cause that's exactly all, at the end of the day, that's really what it is. 100%. Yeah. Because there, there's people who are like, oh man, I just want to sink into a mattress like it's a puffy cloud. And it's Ugh, like, no, I can't do that. I need like very firm support, like, and I need my back to be aligned in its perfect position for yep. me to wake up feeling good. Um, I've had mattresses where I just sink into them. I've had, you know, super firm mattresses. I've had like my my last mattress was like fucking tiny, and I just sink into it like a fucking turtle, and I just wake up feeling like shit the next day, like almost worse than before I went to bed. And so, um, but no, this one is great because I. Like I said, I feel like I didn't fall into their marketing ploy because I I really did do the research on this one compared to the other ones, and I feel like out of, like compared to memory foam, this one really does sink where you need it to mm-hmm. and support where you need it to. So, which is like exactly what I needed. All of that to say, now I need a fucking good pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Cause now I'm waking up and like my back feels great, but my neck's a little sore because I've got shitty pillows. So and here you are. Like I said, I feel like I'm on a never-ending search for a quality then sleep. You're gonna get like the right weighted blanket and God the right material it's of sheets. sheets. I know it. That's what I'm saying. It's you know. a never-ending quest. Yeah. Good luck. Honestly, thank you. Fuck. It is what it is, and like I said, this is definitely probably one of the best purchases I've ever made in my entire life. It was an absolute no-brainer. Given yeah, the you price. got it for a steal, so I was just like, yeah, done. Yep, don't even care if a hooker owned it before because it was like, got yeah for that price, I I can't not. Yep. So, um, I feel like there was something else coming over here. Oh yeah, hold on. 
Maybe. 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 No, not really. Never mind. Never mind. I thought I had something, but it was like, nah, it was just like bullshit. So I thought I had like a, oh, I wanted to, no. Did you end up getting the green shit, as you call it? No. No. Uh, you're talking about why I asked you today? Yeah. No. Uh, I was on a, a Discord chat with my brother and one of our friends from Illinois. Uh, I don't think you know Tyler. I know the name, but that's it. Yeah. So we uh, was chatting with him, and he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna go to the I'm gonna go to the gas station and get an energy drink." He's like, "What should I get?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm probably not any help to you because I would just tell you to not get one. Yeah, and I can guarantee you they don't have this there. But my friend has been drinking, and I Got told it. him that shit that you drink. So yeah, cool. Yeah, I drink like a energy powder thing, but I'm very like sensitive to. Some of the chemicals in it, not like a in a healthy way. I mean, a little bit, but you know, like a. I'm familiar with what some of these chemicals do, and specifically what like reactions that they've caused me. So totally, so very it, sensitive. Yeah, it makes you feel a type of way, but at the same time, it's like scientifically they're absolute dog shit for you, anyways. So yeah, I know <laughs> what some of the chemicals. You might I know as... I know the reason why they made me feel bad. <laughs> yeah, like, from a scientific standpoint, like yeah. So really, my my huge issue is sucralose. Your body cannot process it, and a step so just, further than that, it just sits there, right? It just sits there and rots. Yeah. So it's like really dog shit for you, and can make you sick. Yeah, which yeah, it's not, it's not like it's gonna kill you. And I mean, I was gonna say it doesn't cause cancer, but I don't. I don't, it, it I don't actually, know. It Maybe it does. Probably does, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it, yeah, no, avoid sucralose. And a lot of like energy shit that says no sugar has sucralose in it. Most oses are fair to avoid. No, not so- most. Okay, not saying all. Thing. most no okay there's like i mean to be fair you could avoid eating sugar for the rest of your life and that's fine exactly but like you know oats is just it's just forms of sugar no i know that yeah and like and so i know like glucose, like, glucose is, is quite essential <laughs> yeah is, i get that now your body can produce glucose from protein. So you don't need to ingest. If you ingest protein, you don't need to ingest sugar. Right. But again, but like I said, most, not all. Just say most is, is like if you're looking through ingredients, like. If you, big- want a fun, if you want a fun research project, look up rabbit starvation. Mm. It's interesting. I don't remember much, but you did tell me about that. Rabbit is a very high source of protein, Mm -hmm. does not have uh, carbohydrates, and does not have a high content of fat, so it has little energy. Basically, it's just uh, proving from a macronutrient level that you cannot survive on protein alone. Right. Right. So you need to consume some form of energy. Right. And then fat or sugar. Yeah. Whether that be complex or simple. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, Straight this beer, yeah? Yeah. I mean, Fuck it. That. <laughs> That's wanna, what we do on this podcast. Unless you want to talk about more oses, and we can do that too. I'm cool. No. All right. I think we've exhausted that conversation for now. Fair enough. For now. We've dived deep into the science. <laughs> we've, we've, we've dove in all the way down. Uh, got some particles. I'll yes. throw that into a look. Much particles. Do you think? Never mind. No, go ahead. We're there now. Well, I was gonna say, is it intentional? But I don't think it is intentional. Um, particles do affect the taste of a beer. Yes. Tend to add some bitterness. Yes. A little bit of sour as well, in my opinion. Yes, I also agree with that. Um, 
but I guess my question of do you think was do you think that's ever intentional to be like because uh. it adds this like grainy hoppiness which I think that taste could be intentional but I don't think anyone is thinking man we should have not we should have kept this beer unfiltered or we should have unfiltered the hops uh, to get more of those bitter tastes, more of that bitter hop taste. I think it's... Uh, so I wonder if anyone's brewed a beer and then been like, this, this would be better. Or yeast. I don't know. Whatever. I, th- I think. I, I'm i not positive. You know what I mean, though? Yeah. No. I wonder uh, if anyone brewed a beer and been like, hmm, maybe don't filter this. No, absolutely they do. 100%. Okay. Yeah. Like, when they did this, they weren't like, Oh shit! Some no, some... I know, I know. Unfiltering it was, or at least to some degree, mm-hmm. intentional. Mm-hmm. But I mean, has anyone brewed a beer, like filtered it all out, all that stuff, mm-hmm. and and then was like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have. Yeah, that's what I mean. And then future batches didn't. So for the sake of argument, I've got to say, yeah, probably. Like yeah, like in existence has that ever happened? Exactly. <laughs> yes. Like I said, <laughs> but I just, I just mean like, you is know, that common? Where, you, you know, like, like is that like a like I like this a, like a fallback? T- talking about this beer specifically. Yeah. Like like did, if if they had filtered all this out, would it be too light and uninteresting? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's fair. Um. Uh. I think because y- I think the only edge that this beer has. Is that unfiltered taste the only edge? I think so, to be honest with you, because and, and I I genuinely think that because I it, it's it's not like they get to the point where they're like, all right, we're gonna filter this or not, right? Like, exactly. Like they know, but especially breweries like this, yeah, they like, have a plan. Yeah, they got a plan. They know what they're doing, and so I think they curate all the flavors and the intensity of flavors around like the fact, knowing that they're like, all right, we're not gonna filter this. So it's gonna add some of this and some of that, and I don't I don't know this for a fact, but I assume that by doing this, uh, not every can is the same. Some cans are gonna be a little more bitter. Some cans are gonna have a sure. little bit more sourness in it because there's a little bit of unpredictability in it because you don't know how much of these of this shit is in there. Um, it it probably not gonna make a huge difference, but I believe that it could be noticeable from can to can. Um. So, so I guess to answer your question, though, I I think legitimately yes. I think some I think some brewers have gone through the whole process and they make their beer and they're like, oh, this is good, and then maybe and then like, like, fuck, like fuck, man, if we wouldn't have filtered this, I think that actually would have added what we were looking for. Be- you got to think of like when people experiment, right? Like sometimes no. they experiment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. People experiment with things like they're not familiar with and they're like, we know we're going to get something similar to this, but at the same time, we're not 100% sure what the outcome is going to look like until we get there. All right. Tell me how this beer smells. It's beer. I think your sniffer is going to be like it's. I agree with you. I mean, when we first like, th- and that's why I say that because I'm like, when we first sniffed it, I'm like, I'm getting something and it's nice, but I I can't like put a a name to the to the sniff. Hoppy. Uh, citrus. Orange. Yes. <laughs> Hoopy. Uh, oh, correct. Uh, you spelled that wrong. What? Spelled what? orange wrong. I didn't. Yeah, you did. How did you? My bad. <laughs> My bad. My bad. Um, they described this beer as honeydew melon and tropical passion fruit. Mm. I don't really get the honeydew melon. It's not very tart. I would argue. I, I, I picture honeydew melon as tart. I mean, maybe. No, a honeydew bit. melon is really like watery and sweet. Yeah, it's a little tart. No, it's not tart at all. Yeah, you it need is. to have a honeydew melon. It's a little tart. No. Yeah. Ask Elizabeth. She'll be the tiebreaker. No. I'm telling you. Like, you, 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 
you're saying like Elizabeth it would add some credibility <laughs> and I think I just don't who do you want to ask because I'm telling you right now honeydew melon is sweet. a honeydew melon scientist I know it's sweet I'm just saying like the flavor profile is like a little more tart no okay. you know what I think of honeydew this this is this is gonna kind of discredit me a little bit but when I think of honeydew melon I think of like green tea with a shit ton of honey it has this like yeah creamy... you have to add the honey to sweeten it up I know oh my god no someone I was getting that I'm googling honeydew melon sweet or well tart or sweet it's it's fucking sweet dog I'm I'm not gonna end up with anything so here do honeydew melon flavor this like. one says the ripe honeydew is the sweetest of all melons boom. Now, what were what their categories of melons? Sure. Well, and sweet, I mean, you can be sweet and tart, right? I, yeah, I understand that. But if they're saying that's the sweetest of all melons? I don't even know what these melons are. What's... There's a green Camouflage? One. Cassaba? I've never heard of this. But I want I'd the camouflage. Crenshaw? Oh, I want the Crenshaw, too. European cantaloupe? I don't want that shit. Galea? I, I don't know what any of these are. They don't like they're, they're like watermelon. Oh, the watermelon is on here. <laughs> just on the watermelon's definitely sweeter than a honey. Uzbek melon. melon. But here's the thing, though, bro. A sprite melon. Watermelons what? are pretty juicy and watery, although sweet. <sighs> Honeydew is just like it's. It has a soft texture, and it you just bite into like a like a sugary sweetness. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not disagree. I'm yeah. I think the sweetest honeydew I've ever had is sweeter than the sweetest watermelon I've ever had. Because watermelon, can, although sweet, is refreshing. I don't no, think honeydews no, are refreshing. No. Honeydews are not refreshing by any means. They're, they're pretty sweet. No, I know they're sweet. I'm just like... I understand you're like... Like things can be two things. I get that. But well, I, and, I I've and, never had a tart... And in the flavor of honeydew. Yeah, no, I get that. I've, right? I've, I've never picked up on any tartness, personally. A better, uh, a good way... A good way to decide this is just for us to go buy a goddamn fucking honeydew melon and eat well, it here, on the next here's, podcast. Here's the thing, too. Okay. Right? Yeah. The, the containers of, like, honeydew. Yeah. Those are, like, overripe honeydew. Sure. Yeah, we can get a Come, fresh one. And next to cantaloupe, which is inherently more bitter. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, no, we can get a fresh one. Not we'll arguing that. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to. I will. I don't like honeydew. I love honeydew. Dude, I, those are the worst fruit containers. Yeah, the ones that like the mixture. Honeydew and cantaloupe. There. And then there's usually something else in there. What is it? Is it watermelon? Uh, like all the in there. What maybe if, sometimes doesn't sound familiar. Like, like pineapple or maybe something. It's pineapple. It's like no. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a honeydew, cantaloupe, pineapple, and grapes. That's what's in those things. That's what the, the worst fuck? one? Strawberry, blueberry, and grapes. Top tier. Oh fuck that! That's top tier. Strawberry, blackberries. It's top tier. W. Uh, I can't think of any other ones off the top of my head, <laughs> but like Mango. cantaloupe and honeydew, bottom. I know you don't love mangoes, but mango and pineapple, top tier. Uh, it's like uh, you know the 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 variety chip packages. You may have like two uh Cool Ranch Dorito chips and like seventeen Fritos. Oof. You're like what? what? Who who decided that this was a good ratio? Yeah, we've got we've got delicious flavor packed punch, and then we've got plain salty chip. And I'm a fan of Fritos. I love don't, Fritos. Don't get me wrong. I love Fritos. But the ratio's off. It's a bit off. So I'd like some balance. If I'm already going for the mix pack, yeah. You know, otherwise I would just buy Fritos if I wanted Fritos. Yeah, which I'll do sometimes. Yeah, but. Not if I also want Doritos. All right. Uh, My favorite thing about taste is you said hoppy, bitter. Yeah, we get it. We're drinking an IPA. <laughs> Fuck you. There, there's been IPAs where we don't taste that at all. <laughs> Got them. Uh, Honeydew. <laughs> <laughs> nah. 
<laughs> Can't do it. Can't pull the trigger there, pal. I'm I'm coming up empty. I'm I'm losing interest in this beer, to be honest with you. That's like happening. I said, it's boring. What do you All right, you boring. <laughs> All, right, all right, boring under taste. Not even thoughts. Taste boring. Uh it's a little grassy. Throw yes. That in there. Yes. Yeah, you mentioned that earlier. That's that's 100% right there. I don't think you get enough citrus in the flavor. I really wish you did. I think that would help this beer a lot. I don't think so. No? You no, would, I feel like it would clash with the grassy. I feel like it would be, it'd turn a little syrupy, and I think I think they got a good amount of citrus in there. Then maybe maybe give me some pineapple, maybe a little little, little bit of tartness in there, you know? Okay. Maybe a little honeydew tart. Could roll with that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, feel. It's fairly crisp. Um, yes. It's got that graininess from. The particles, the particles accelerating. Um, you know, pretty like noticeable carb. I think. Yes, I agree. Uh, that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. What are your thoughts on this beer? Um. Yes. It's unfortunate that this beer is released like late September. It'd be a good May beer. June, early June. You know? Springtime, still a little cool, but like warming up, got some sunshine going. I think sunshine is imperative to this beer. But like, here we are, mid-November. Oof. Even if we drank it when it first came out. Yeah. Not great. Not a fall beer. No. So. Wouldn't be my favorite. But here we are. Here we are, you know. All right. Uh, moving on to the rating. Um... Hmm. Hmm. Huh. I think this is a little. I wonder. I'm good. Do you think those ready? Do you think that soundbite is copywritten? Uh, I don't think so. I doubt it because I don't think Minecraft's music is copyrighted. Technically. Okay. Because I was gonna say, if that soundbite of that is copywritten, I wonder if somebody could make an accurate enough, uh, to trigger it. Yeah. I don't think it would be like a long enough sound bite for it to trigger it That's anyways. Fair. But That's true. It, yeah. It, it, I'm sure someone could. Interesting. Okay. 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 Uh, I'm not ready. Uh, I was stalling, and the problem is I can only think about one thing at a time, and so I miscalculated that in my brain. Uh, I have an idea, but it's not emitting... I just want to see if it existed. And it well, looks sure, like it does exist. Well, I'm sure people do imitate it. You know? <laughs> One hour of villager sounds. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is something. Nice. Someone's bored. Let me tell you what. Because that took a while to render and export. Let me tell you. I mean, that's a joke. But it really happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it did. Um. Uh, all right. I got mine. Finally. Go. Fair enough. Two point seven five for me. Three I, for Levi. I just said three. Yeah. Good. I'll put a word to it. Oh wow! I'm not afraid. Look at you. Um. I am clearly in the fine category. So your description for fine is that the concept is there, but it's not well executed. And I said concept is there and well executed. I think it lacks a little too much. I think we keep talking about how boring it is and, and nothing really pops about it. So I think we both can agree. They've got, they got a good concept going. Um, 
you know, even upon first taste, like I said, when we first opened this, I was like, it's not bad. It's a lot better than the fresh squeezed, in my opinion. So I think they got something going here. It's it needs it needs something to sparkle and shine and 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 maybe something that I added. I was like maybe add some pineapple. So not only do I want to tweak the existing flavors, I need I think it needs to add a little something extra. And I think that's what pushes it down to the fine category rather than good for me. Is I need, think we need to add a little bit more in there before we call it good. Yeah, I mean, like while I don't disagree, I think. My critiques probably like would be that I I would probably just throw more hops in this, um maybe add a different variety mm-hmm. um like I, I think I think Amarillo would pair very well with this add like more of a like a kind of a harsher bitter tone um and keep it kind of on that dry spectrum a little bit yeah. Um. Yeah, I do like it. It is like relatively dry. It's kind of nice. I like that it's crisp and 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 dry. Like it is very clean tasting. Very easy to drink. I just I just yeah. wish it was a little more, a little more something. Yep. And I think I think just making it like just like a very bitter hoppy beer would uh give it that edge that I personally am. You know. Uh, have a preference towards Um, but overall I think it's you know it's a light crisp fresh hop beer I think I think it's enjoyable I think you know it's good for what it is and nothing special but that's not a bad thing yeah yeah no that makes sense I I agree with you Uh, I think yeah we I think we we're both on that same page of like it just needs a little extra oomph in the tank to to make it something really worth it. So but not bad. And for the shoots too, like we were I mean, you were saying there that there was a little bit more in there in their repertoire that you enjoy than you that you th- than you thought you did. Um Yeah, you hate on it, well, the shoots for no reason. Well to be fair, in the Midwest we don't really get a lot but of not them. no reason, but we get the, yeah it's a very no dumb reason. reason. Yeah um, kinda debatable we don't get a we don't get as much to shoots out in illinois as as we do here in washington obviously yeah but uh so the, we get uh, in illinois you know you'd really get the very basic package like the fresh squeezed the the butt porter um there there was like a couple seasonals that would come through is and, there a butte in oregon probably I just wonder because, like, I know Butte, Montana. Montana. But that's you know all I can think about. Uh, don't know. Anyways, there's a Black Butte Ranch, Black Butte, Oregon. Oh, that makes sense actually. Because it's Porter. It's a black. Well, it actually, it is called Black Butte is it a, Porter. It is. It is. Yeah. Right, cool. So checks out. Well. That's this episode of Chasing Freshies from Deschutes. We have one more beer in the Fresh Hop lineup. Possibly two with Lagunitas. Mm. If we can get that, can get I'm it. not too concerned, to be honest. It, we Nick and I have drank it. We thought it was not as good as last year's, so we're not like... We need to do this on the podcast. You can look at last year's episode, and that's it'll it'll work. Yep. Um. Other than that, we're gonna just cruise back into normal beer season, and I would like to do more dark beers coming into like winter time frame. So if you guys have any, like, hey, you must have this on the podcast. Let us know. I've already got an idea. Great. Maybe we'll do it. I Maybe. Know. We'll see. Maybe we'll revisit my dark beer cocktails. Ooh. That was fun. It was fun. Uh, the beers themselves weren't particularly amazing. No, so it was, that it was, was another uh, what's in Levi's fridge kind of yeah. dealio. So if we could use good beers this time, that would be a little better. I'd be down. All right. Let us know. 
Uh, other than that, we'll see you on, you know, the uh, next Tuesday or whatever. The next video you watch. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>